Patrick Santelli here live on the floor of the CME Group. We're awaiting initial and continuing jobless claims, the only real data points today, and 221,000. Wow, these numbers are really low based on history. That is down 9,000 from an unrevised 230,000 last week. Welcome to the early 1970s, I guess. It's always good news, and of course, other aspects of the economy are doing pretty well as uh, uh, we've seen over the last couple of days, especially that service sector number that we had. If we look at the yields, 2.85, pretty much on top of the closing yield range, highest closing yields going back to January of 2014. We have 16 billion 30-year bonds at 1 o'clock Eastern to be auctioned. The threes and tens thus far have been a bit on the soft side. One would imagine that with rates moving up, prices moving down. Dollar index finally popped over 90, but it's pretty much unchanged today. Equities, lots of volatility higher on the day. I expect another exciting session for all markets. Andrew, back to you. Thank you, Rickster. I uh, want to get over to Steve Leishman, who's here looking very studious at your computer. Yeah, I'm there. trying to what figure out. Rick, Rick is right. Um, it's, it's early 70s, late 60s, but there's a ratio that tells you about the um, um, uh, jobless claims as a percent of the total covered employment, and that puts it a little more perspective. The you bottom line. You remember much about the 60s? Um, no, I was a young, young, young man back then, a young, a young toddler. Um, anyway, carry on. What happened in the 60s was happened later in the 70s for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, the, point, the point being that uh, you're down around 1.4, 1, maybe even 1.3 percent, a very, very low number. But you guys, you were talking about interest rates. Rick was talking about interest rates. They've ticked up in the 288. I want to talk about supply. Okay. And we've talked about the supply coming from uh, the government. I want to talk about the supply coming from the Fed, and I spent a little time this morning crunching some data, looking at what it means with the balance sheet decline. First, I want to show you a chart that doesn't show you anything, okay? Okay. Take a look at the line chart. In there, if you could just peer in the very, very right-hand most part of that chart, you will see a very slight dip. And that's the first initial wave of the Federal Reserve's program to reduce its balance sheet. And this will ramp up to $600 billion a year. Now what I did in the next chart is I modeled in, not, not really sophisticated modeling, what will happen this year. You'll go down by from $4.4 trillion, you can see on the right part, wow. down to four. And then the next year it ramps up to the total that they'll be doing each year, $6 trillion. Four and six is one. It's a trillion dollars that they will have by the end of 2019. This to me is some of what the bond market is bracing for when it comes to supply and trying to figure in not will I be a better buyer of bonds but will Scott or the guy next to me how that person's going to react so three factors at play here when it comes to the bond market the additional supply from the Fed not buying additional supply from the federal government and then you tell me you had Eunice on I guess earlier today what China's going to do they've made some noises they still have a massive flow in dollars Wait, Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.